All right, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all the participants of uh, today's uh, seminar. Um, today's uh, guest of honor and the uh, guest speaker is uh, Professor Aruna, Executive Vice Chairman, Chief Executive of NASENA, a National Agency for Science and uh, Engineering Infrastructure. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, lockdown, and our University of Nigeria has taken all the measures and completed all the preparations to provide such virtual environments to bring people together and provide such these kinds of educational environments. And I am very proud of uh, being a member of Nile University because maybe we are one of the few universities where such activities are still going on. Um, I'm also uh, proud to say that to share with you the fact that uh, at our university, education has never been interrupted because of our measures and using uh, virtual environments to provide the continuity of education altogether. Um, uh, with us, uh, maybe before, maybe before uh, our guest speaker begins his speech, uh, I need to introduce him to everybody altogether. So again, our guest uh, speaker today is uh, Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna. He is the Executive Vice Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASENI, and holds a PhD and Master's of Engineering degrees in Electrical Engineering from Bayara University, Kano, and a second PhD and Master's of Philosophy degrees in Entrepreneurship from Jamo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Nairobi. Kenya. He is a fellow of Nigerian Academy of Engineering, a registered chartered engineer with United Kingdom Engineering Council, Koran registered, a fellow of the UK-based Institution of Engineering and Technology, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, among others. Aruna has vast industrial experience at technical, middle and top management level. He has varied publications in national and international journals, and he is an author of three reputable textbooks. From Harun, uh, Prof. Haruna has recorded several remarkable achievements that has intervened in various sectors of national development. Notably, the successful takeoff of Nasani Solar and a limited liability company, which manufactures solar modules and related components, ongoing projects on, a, on establishment of transformer manufacturing plants, high voltage laboratory, development of unmanned aerial vehicles, and food processing machineries for agricultural purposes, electronic voting solution to curb electoral malpractices, the nationwide tractor recovery, and adoption of future production technologies, such as virtual reality, application of artificial intelligence, in advanced manufacturing, CAD, CAM, and edit additive in manufacturing. In response to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, he recently spearheaded the development of first made in Nigeria ventilator, 3D face mask, and automated environmental disinfectant spraying machines. Aruna is a visiting professor to Nile University of Nigeria. Again, sir, welcome to today's seminar. And also, uh, I am co-hosting today's seminar with Professor Steve Adeshina. By the way, my name is Enan Kapukaya, Kapukaya the Director of uh, CRN Marketing. Uh, I think uh, among with us together, uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor of Nile University of Nigeria, I have seen him uh, here. I am sure he uh, wants to share uh, a couple of things uh, together with us. Yes, Mr. Vice Chancellor, we are all ears. Thank you, Prof. Kapukaya. Distinguished guest speaker, the Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Engineer Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna, distinguished guests, distinguished academicians, Dear students, dear Nile University of Nigeria family members, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special seminar. 
On behalf of the Nile University of Nigeria Management, I'd like to begin by wishing you, your families and loved ones, the best of health during these challenging times. We know these are very uncertain times and hope you, your families, and your loved ones are keeping safe. Our thoughts are with those who may be unwell, uneasy, or grieving during this difficult time. Our prayers are with anyone infected by COVID-19, and we wish speedy recovery to them. May Allah, may God protect all of us from this pandemic and from all physical and mental disease and problems. Dear audience, as you know, more than one month ago, following the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic on our shores, as Nile University of Nigeria, we closed our campus to ensure our students and our staff safety. After only, only one week of preparation, our courses began to be delivered online in all our programs by using licensed digital pl platforms. Distinguished participants, our online education activities include live stream lecture, recorded lecture, sharing soft copy books and other documents, and online assignments and projects. By continuing our education, as Nile University of Nigeria online, we wanted to reassure our students, our parents, and all public that Nile University of Nigeria is here in your education during this unusual time. As academic and admin staff, we have gone more virtue, but we continue to provide education services to our students by using online platforms. Distinguished participants, as we all know, education is a foundation for the development and progress of any society. So education service is a very important and of course special responsibility in social life. But at the same time, no, it is more important, especially during this unprecedented time. In the past decade, as Nile University of Nigeria, it was the best generation of Nigeria. And today, we also continue our best in this extraordinary period for the next generation of Nigeria. Distinguished participants, in addition to online courses during this difficult period, we are organizing online career days, online certified seminars, online training seminars and courses, online open courses, online open days, and of course, online academic seminars. During this period, we have organized more than 20 different online activities. Today, we are together in one of the very important academic seminars. The speaker of our today's seminar is the executive vice chairman of NASENI, Professor Muhammad Sani Haruna. Dear Professor, dear Pro thank you very much for taking the time to share your experience and knowledge with us in this seminar. Dear audience, as we all know, education is not just classroom performance. Taking advantage of experts' experience and knowledge is also an integral part of higher education. So today, we are going to understand better the economics of the additive manufacturing during this period. Dear participants, I would also like to thank you all for being with us in this special seminar today. And I'd like to thank Prof. Steve Adeshina, the Dean of the Engineering Faculty, and his team due to organizing this special program. I would also like to thank Prof. Kenan Kapukaya, the director of PR and his team for their contribution to this seminar. Distinguished participants, in these challenging times, we believe and pray 
and we are certain that Nigeria would tide the storm and come back strong. Yes, we will get through these difficult times together. Thank you very much for attending this program. And thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Osman Nuru Aras, Vice Chancellor of Nagi University of Nigeria. Now it is time for the seminar to begin. Yes, Prof. Uh, uh, Haruna, they're all ears and waiting for your seminar. Thank you very much. Uh, the MC, my dear Vice Chancellor, uh, the Minister of Ceremony, the Dean, Faculty of Engineering, fellow faculty members, distinguished guests across the globe, my colleagues from National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, my friends across the globe who have joined this seminar to be with us. It is my greatest uh, pleasure and honor to present this seminar that uh, is titled The Economics of Predictive Manufacturing in the Era of COVID-19. I am delighted to have seen my former and current bosses being online with us. I have seen Professor James Katende uh, uh, of uh, uh, the university of several universities, but uh, currently in uh, Botswana. I have seen the current vice chancellor of uh, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture of uh, Technology, Nairobi, Kenya. I have seen people from Academy of Engineering. I have seen the executive secretary of uh, the Royal Academy of Engineering. I've seen also my former employer, Solomon Godsey of Mason's Power Generation from UK joining us in this. It is indeed a great honor for me that you are still with us. Now, my presentation intends to give three key messages. Apart from the academic exercise, what do we intend to benefit from this? presentation. Number one message that I intend to deliver on this presentation is that we should not forget that among the opportunities of COVID-19 pandemic, which is a misfortune of course, but then with every misfortune there is an opportunity, is fast-tracking local innovations in manufacturing for self-reliance an opportunity for everybody to see what can he do, each locality, each region, what can they do to meet up their demand locally without endangering any alliances with other organizations. Message number two is that predictive manufacturing is a handy and user-friendly tool for designers, for inventors, for innovators of equipment, especially those that have to retrofit any equipment. You certainly have to amend and develop new fat to replace an existing one, especially when you are challenged to source for materials from close markets. Inward looking and local innovation becomes compulsory. Message number three, among the winning game changers in post-COVID-19 economic sustainability solution will be additive manufacturing. Therefore, my colleagues, researchers, my colleagues, academicians, and science, technology, and innovation family in general need to key in as early as possible to take the advantage because a lot of focus, a lot of demand, a lot of pressure will be put on the academicians and researchers to bring solutions to many things, not only for health, because post 
COVID-19 activities will, will see things happening differently. A lot of things will never be the same again. But then what is additive manufacturing? My friends, the academicians, permit me and kindly excuse me for trying to be as less technical as possible to bring the point home because they are non-engineering, they are some financial uh, experts and practitioners, people of other fields that are with us today. So additive manuf manufacturing in simple terms is also known as 3D printing. That is three dimensional. Anything that has three dimension, it has all the sizes. It's a process that creates physical object from a digital design. The term references technologies that grow dimensionally, length, width, height. Objects once of a fine layer at a time. So it prints or it builds objects one layer at a time gradually. Each successive layer bonds to the preceding layer or melted partially or permanently to grow the assembly in that steady process. Additive manufacturing uses data, either raw data that is used for doing computer programming or what comes from computer-aided design, a design on a computer and the cost transfer to 3D printer or 3D scanner. You can scan an object that you want to reproduce and the cost generated can be transferred to 3D printer to be developed. To drive this home, home paid folder to assist in understanding, Kindly permit me to play this video. What is video. additive manufacturing? Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is a process that creates a physical object from a digital design. An engineer designs the object using computer-aided design, or CAD software. The 3D design file is then sliced into thin layers and uploaded to an additive manufacturing machine. The manufacturing process begins once an extremely thin layer of metal powder is spread across the platform. A heat source, such as laser or electron beam, then melts the first layer of the 3D design. The platform is lowered and another layer of metal powder is spread across the platform. The layering and melting process is then repeated until the part is complete. The metallic powder is removed and a physical object is revealed. Additive manufacturing allows you to produce parts that are lighter, stronger, and more durable than traditionally made parts. Build times are faster. Engineers can add precise features and complex geometries without increasing cost. In fact, additive manufacturing is revolutionizing the way we work. Okay, you have had including the advantages and other features of additive manufacturing, which make my task easier. Now, the components or materials that are used for additive manufacturing, traditionally, is metallic powder and polymer, or a combination of the powder and polymer. As of today, 51% of the total material used is still metal. However, many materials have come up, especially with the current situation of closed markets. People have been looking inwards, companies, private and researchers have been looking onwards and developing some composite alternative materials and discover that for flexibility, elasticity, ductility, strength, and other features of materials. It is better you develop your materials so that you can get materials or component or fats or machine from 3D printing the way you need it. It is possible to use different substances like thermoplastic, ceramics, glass, 
biodegradable materials, even edible materials like chocolates are currently being used as filament and materials for building uh, parts and machines through additive manufacturing. Historically, 3D has been used mostly for design and validation and prototyping. People used to use 3D machines to produce components or samples as a proof of concept or to build physically and dimensionally of what they intend to put in the machine and produce. However, this has changed drastically over the years. In fact, it was spread in 2018 that um, the market share of 3D printing or additive manufacturing will by now have been only 13 billion US dollars. But with the advent of coronavirus, this focus has changed drastically because of a greater participation and popularity of this method. Despite this growth, however, manufacturing is still only a little portion of the manufacturing industry. This projection, which was done by Smart Publishing, as I said, in 2018, has expected that by now it, it will be around 13.9 billion US dollars. However, a review has over 28 billion dollar uh, accumulation or growth has come in additive manufacturing. It is used in hardware, materials development, and other things that you will see. The majority user of additive manufacturing before, the, before now have been automotive industries followed by aerospace, then electronics and consumer items. But today, medical is trying to overtake others because it's the problem of the day. As you can see the projection of this graph indicating in billions of dollars and the percentage of materials usage. Interestingly, in 2019, the, the company called Relativity Space, that is uh, a company in aerospace industry, has invented the largest 3D printer in the world. It's using this 3D printer to produce rockets, to produce spacecraft. In fact, it is currently producing what it called Taran 1, that it wants to launch uh, into space with over 95 components of this rocket from 3D printing. Uh, again, briefly see the printing technology, of course, fast forwarded in order to save our time. Uh, this is over and the invented 3D printer is the one that is used to produce this equipment. So what that is telling us, even any other thing is possible and is practicable with additive manufacturing. Then why do we so much emphasize now on additive manufacturing? Originally, additive manufacturing is part of advanced manufacturing technologies that industry revolution to make production revolution in 
the with internet of things, uh, manufacturing to be taking larger share than what was forecasted for it. It is widely wide availability and growing popularity is supported by the flexibility of computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing softwares, improve automation, the need for robotics, the possibility of developing other composite materials, the possibility of mixing alloy folders in order to produce components by additive means. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, was discovered, unfortunately, in December 2019 China. It has affected many things. It has spread across the globe. It's growing in such a way that as at 11 a.m. today, the number of infection worldwide by World Health Organization record is 3,557,235. And with over 245,000 deaths and affecting everyone in the world by region by region. Africa is still the lowest hit with 33,973 reported still the latest figures of World Health Organization as at 11 a.m. today. Now, what is its toil and impact on the economic sphere? Beyond the tragic health hazard and loss of human beings, the economic consequences of the pandemic is better imagined. The disruption has resulted and it coming with significant inconvenience, loss of jobs, loss of uh, investment of what is to come next. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted real problem with global manufacturing chain. If you are input to the industries used to come from elsewhere, from other factories within your country or abroad, this has shown you is compared to look what can you do locally within your factory in order to sustain means of livelihood of yourself and the employee. The globalization of supply chain in the manufacturing sector has been disrupted, as stated earlier. The just-in-time inventory control efficiency has been disrupted or cut off completely. The cumulative effect of lockdown caused by the uh, pandemic have tremendously slowed down supply of components for production. Even of essential items, in some cases, even on food and with growing high demand. Hence, the need for survival remedy. It has also brought exposure and the limitation of advanced societies because the shortages of personal protective equipment, managing equipment like ventilators across countries like the US, Canada, and the Europe has shown that none is spare. Everybody must have some local capacity and ability if he wishes to survive. This necessitates Imagine innovations and inventions. The health sector, the health personnel and infrastructure is, is currently being overstretched with shortages of needed equipment like personal protective equipment, 
ventilators, and other medical supplies. It is a respiratory disease, of course, that of ventilator to help in breathing and sustain lung functions is needed. The absence or lack of such equipment means loss of lives in overstretched medical centers. In uh, Africa, which is the most vulnerable countries are located, few ventilators with some countries have been known at all. The record before the African Center for Disease Control shows that 53 countries in Africa are affected. Cumulatively, 49,352 cases as of today, with 1,951 deaths. Which as at today, the most critical piece of life saving equipment, which is the ventilator, is in short supply. According to World Health Organization, only 2,000 ventilators are available across 41 countries in Africa. If you can compare this with last week availability of over 170,000 in US alone. 10 African countries, as I said earlier, have no ventilators at all. The list and the quantities available, if they are all working, if they are all functional, is stated in this uh, table. With Nigeria having approximately 169 despite donation from other sources. Attempt to procure the PPEs and ventilators uh, by government in Africa has met with a lot of challenges due to competing demand by the countries that are supplying this before now. Their need to maximize stocks and to supply to other countries has made it impossible. Ventilators are also expensive, even if you can get them, costing as much as $25,000 or even more. Now, additive manufacturing has been deployed and is being deployed to produce this equipment currently. Many factories, many structures have converted their workshops their garages and their manufacturing line trying to produce the needed equipment. One thing that is important that it is only those that are using additive manufacturing that have succeeded in doing this combustion because retooling a manufacturing line to produce a different product can take a very long time. Additive manufacturing companies around the world are helping not only to provide this equipment, but also in sustaining their product. 3D printer, many uh, company formulas, for example, in uh, Ohio, are producing 250,000 uh, test slabs per day. That is what is helping the US to meet the demand of testing everyone. This was achieved through collaboration, collaborative efforts with uh, New York and uh, University of uh, South Florida. The swaps are coming in large quantities with shortages of PPE also. They have also ventured into producing that not only the test slabs, including uh, bulbs needed for ventilators, respirators, and face labs, the face mask. With the shortages of PPE in other uh, areas also, through this collaborative effort, 3D face masks and shields, such as 
the one you can see on the screen are also being produced. Again, in Spain, approval has already been given and production has commenced for production of 100 ventilators per day completely using 3D technology, as you can see. More than 65% component of this come from 3D manufacturing. Again, in Paris, 61 3D printers have been purchased and immediately deployed. They are purchased specifically 3D printers for, pre for printing face masks and components needed for ventilators. In Italy, as a result of challenges, you know, Italy is hit harder than most European countries. The shortage of ventilators and the one they have, they discover that the valves are faulty. They need a supply. Origin, original manufacturers elsewhere across the world have not meet their demand. They resulted into using, they contacted a company in uh, Italy that is producing this uh, 3D uh, design and it directly are uh, used for fixing to the ventilators. And that solved the problem. Again, through this 3D technology, the manufacturers of Ferrari sport cars also converted a portion of their production line dedicated to using uh, 3D respirator bulbs to meet the demand of the being currently exporting to other nations. Engineers at South Carolina use the same technology happening in uh, uh, Italy to produce this type of ventilators that they call BESPA that is currently being used. Again, in China, in Wusun, as a result of the outbreak uh, in the ancient city, it was necessary to deploy urban waste to produce quarantine rooms that is used to quarantine infected persons due to this shortage of so many. A completely this house is built completely using 3D design. An interesting thing about this finding, which they don't know before, is that this 3D model is three times or uh, building is three times stronger than traditional concrete walls because you can mix powdered metals and mix get certain degree of alloys, therefore getting what you have. There is an internet by Siemens through an open source where design is provided, allowing people to register online, obtain the design, and try to realize it if they have 3D equipment. This network provider through cloud-based system are allowing people and encouraging and sharing ideas. All schools are trying to save the problem online. You control your challenge of design or realization or material sourcing with some characteristics that you don't have instrument to characterize the equipment you or the materials you want to use. You have expert operating solution in a kind of question and answer platform. The network is available globally and covers the entire value chain from uploading, simulation, checking design, printing process, and so on and so forth. You are aware of the success of Senegal celebrated uh, that produce uh, ventilator for $60. Again, Djibouti and Kenya have facilities, 
through open source and collaboration with other international organizations, and also a Nairobi-based 3D company as a printer and adopter using 3D design that can allow uh, the ventilators to be interconnected to three to four, five patients using one gas cylinder, therefore relieving pressures. So five a patient can be connected to the three source of oxygen and uh, through the flexibility of 3D printing. In fact, in case you miss this Al Jazeera report on the success in Senegal, you may want to listen to this. It's not just the Western world that has the scientific know-how to beat the virus. In Senegal, a laboratory has used its AIDS and Ebola experience to develop a $1 COVID-19 testing kit. Al Jazeera's Nicholas Hawk has more. Senegal is doing what most countries can't, testing everyone, symptoms or not, entering a health center for the novel coronavirus. It has no shortage of testing kit thanks to this lab at the Institut Pasteur. Researchers are developing a $1 quick diagnostic kit originally made to test for dengue fever. Patients drop blood or saliva onto the devices and wait for a bloodline to appear, like a pregnancy test, explains researcher Amadou Sal. There is no need for a highly equipped lab that needs to rapidly produce two to four million kits, not just for us, but for African countries, so that we can detect and isolate patients quickly. The sick are administered a cheap anti-malarial drug called chloroquine, commonly found in sub-Saharan Africa, where malaria is endemic. With only 50 ventilator machines for 16 million people, Senegalese engineers are using a 3D printing machine to produce more. While imported ventilators cost $16,000, this one is just $60. Senegal is counting the cost and it's paying off. More than a month into the outbreak, the small West African nation spread only two deaths, with most patients treated healed. Senegal has the largest rate of recovery in patients infected with the coronavirus in Africa, the third in the world ahead of countries like the United States and France. And while it has a tiny health budget compared to those countries, it has a wealth of experience in dealing with infectious diseases and outbreaks. It's not Th just the Western. Thanks to technologies of uh, uh, additive manufacturing that in this uh, facility to bend or innovate. Now, the economics of additive manufacturing. As we see, there is a lot of challenges, uh, dissent, manufacturers with near 100% local sources of raw materials have greater chances of survival and growth in post-COVID-19 economic sustainability program or plan or prediction. However, with dwindling value of Naira in Nigeria and collapse of some manufacturing sector, there are opportunities for entrepreneurs venturing into additive manufacturing. The same is demand for parts and components. Again, other possibilities, other ventures, other investment that can be profitable in this area of additive manufacturing uh, specify is not only in the medical profession as on this uh, slide that I'm sharing. But then what is the situation in Nigeria? Of course, as at uh, 11 a.m. today, uh, Nigeria has a total of confirmed 2,950 uh, infected persons with 2,371 still active, 281 discharge and 98 deaths. There is a projection, however, of 0.5% infection rate in Nigeria because more and more people are getting infected despite the majors in place. If you go by this estimation of 5% of 
of 200 million people, it means we need, it means 40 million people need at least the personal protective equipment. If one quarter of these are expected to be infected, so we, we need at least 100, uh, at least 10 million uh, ventilators, more than 40 million PPE, because most PPEs are usable. You need to dispose them after use. Can additive manufacturing help this man? In National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASEMI, additive manufacturing is not a new thing, but we can authoritatively say in Nigeria as a whole, it is at its infancy. NASEMI has been using 3D facilities in three centers, NASEMI in Abuja, Engineering Materials Development Institute, Akure, and Advanced Manufacturing Technology Institute in Jalingo. We have been using 3D uh, technology those models of components we needed. When we needed to cast the block engine, produce its 3D model to see how it is and examine it. So also is this rice treasure. We first had the 3D model and use the facilities and use computer numerical control or CNC machine to do the final product. We also used to produce spare parts such as bolt, nuts, rows and orders through 3D printing. To illustrate 3D scanning, when this component you can see at the is a drilling rig power head for National Water Research Institute based in Kaduna. It's an old model that they cannot get the spare from the manufacturer. The manufacturer has spaced out that production system. So the approach was to dismantle it to see the disassemble power head, 3D scan it and have the 3D model and produce 3D component. That's what we used to do 3D for. But now, as I said earlier, the technology has gone beyond that. Collaborating with Nigeria Academy of Engineering, with Royal Academy of Engineering of UK and other international academies of engineering that had a lot video conference with us on what the global engineering family can do for COVID-19. Apart from the disinfectants and other products we did, not using 3D, 3D, we developed 3D model of face mask with replaceable filters, such that you don't need to dispose the filters, I mean the mask, the face mask, but the filters. Of course, we got standard specified proof standard of 3D face mask uh, that is British standard that was shared through the Academic of Engineering. And also did this alternative design, which we finally realized it as the product. Uh, while I Crave you are in Georgia. Witness this. Let me pick my 3D mask that Naseni produced and show it to you. Also. It has a replaceable filter, as you see the component there. Now, you can say the production process is uh, slow and mass production and 10 million uh, masks will take time. Of course, we can use 
the codes generated in the development of this design produce a mold for injection molding machine and uh, get appropriate material that is uh, suitable and do injection or blow molding in order to have large quantities. We have injection molding machines, uh, two of our centers in Inugu and uh, also in Mina that can do this, provided there is patronage. In conclusion, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the effect of COVID-19 pandemic will influence the varieties of next production revolution or industry 4.0 or port industrial revolution. With prominence of additive manufacturing and affordability of 3D products. 3D product will be cheaper, will be affordable with the understanding that you can develop your own materials that will serve as planning for their development. 3D printing is a viable alternative to English, uh, for full plate manufacturing plants, especially for parts and this of true prototype. I also recommend to engineering, science, technology, and innovation family in Africa to invest time and develop new materials, new technologies that will lead to all class products through additive manufacturing. Before leaving, may I also crave your indulgence to entertain with this also. This is a GE aviation industry, how various components of aircraft are being produced even before now using 3D technology. You have, you will probably have been flown in an aircraft that has some 3D component in a system that you don't know. The situation of today and the discovery of more materials that made themselves available and compatible to 3D raw materials. Your guess is as good as mine, what is coming next. We therefore need to join the train in order not to miss out of the destination. All these are 3D products. The beauty of it, as I said earlier, you can have any shape, any angle. The way you design it in computer and view it, you can have it exactly like that, which may not be practicable using your hands in some manual or even computer operated machine. What you are able to generate pictorially, visually in 3D design, it is that shape that will have its cut exactly uh, copied and transferred to the 3D printer to give you actually this. The strength will depend on the materials you use, the alloy you mix, depending on what is your preference. Is this elasticity? Is this a ductile strength? Is this uh, ceramic properties? You can optimize any of the features that is appropriate, that is more relevant, that is your preference. This is GE Aviation Industry illustration. Uh, and uh, in 3D style, may I say thank you very much for being part of this uh, presentation. We appreciate you. Let me transfer to my 
Vice Chancellor and the North Australian. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Haruna, uh, for such a beautiful and inspirational uh, presentation. Actually, we have learned a lot from this presentation, uh, Prof. Haruna. Actually, science and technology and engineering has always been important. But while going through such difficult times, it uh, gains more importance to have such technologies. So we have uh, seen lots of things about 3D printing. Even uh, today's, uh, the most developed countries are having difficulty in manufacturing some certain devices like uh, face mask or, or let's say some other devices maybe uh, help people to breathe, like ventilators you have mentioned. Um, so uh, from now on, I'd like to uh, invite uh, my co-host, uh, Professor Odeshina. Uh, please, the uh, microphone is now his. Uh, thank you very much again for the presentation. Uh, Professor Howell. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for uh, paying attention and for listening to this uh, very educative lecture. I want to thank everyone from all over Africa and North for being part of this. I want to especially thank uh, Professor M. Runa, the executive for the Chief Executive Officer of Naseni for a most educative lecture and for his fantastic leadership that is, he is providing in Naseni at this critical time. I know that at this time you are in the eye of, of the storm and I trust that uh, you will meet the challenges. I want to thank you and really what can I say about the man who actually rose through the ranks of both engineering, education and practice. He, he, he rose through the rank of both engineering, education and practice, in technical education to get a PhD and indeed two PhDs, one in electrical engineering, one in entrepreneurship. Uh, what can I say? Had the foremost agency in Nigeria, a man who is a fellow of the Nigeria Academy of Engineering, a fellow of the Institution of uh, Engineering and Technology in the UK, a man who is a fellow of the Nigeria Society of Engineering. So we, uh, you have actually really impressed also on behalf of the Nile University, the Vice Chancellor, staff and student of Nile University, I want to say thank you for a most educative uh, lecture. I want to thank uh, any of our participants that may have one, one question or any questions that you may have, and then I will recognize you, then I will give uh, Prof the chance to answer your question. Thank you. Uh, you can unmute your you can unmute your mic yourself if you have a question or resolve okay, I have a question. Okay. Uh, okay. Prof. Adeshna, can I ask a question myself? Please do. All right. Um, actually, uh, Prof. Haruna was talking about the 3D technology. So, yes, 3D technology can be a good solution uh, to, let's say, manufacturing of some certain devices. I am wondering, uh, so what's the situation in Nigeria in terms of uh, 3D technologies and 3D printing? So what is the technology in Nigeria now? Prof, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Professor uh, Thank you very much. Uh, that is a very good question. It is uh, part of the presentation that I said what is it now in Nigeria? In my one of my slides, I say the 3D technology in Nigeria is still at its infancy. Even though Naseni have been using 3D technology for over seven years now, uh, we do that previously only in order to produce the of this block engine. I go. It uses 3D technology before going for the actual 
production. Before we produce these machines, we produce using their 3D technology. We used to produce spare parts, bolts and nuts stored for industries who find it cheaper, especially specialist bolts and nuts, especially from the oil industries that are not available in the market. So we usually produce is 3D version. Again, when we wanted to produce this component as a spare part that is not available in Nigeria, we have to go through the design and produce is 3D version. However, for actual equipment usage, we have never produced uh, any device other than as a, a sampling method and use it as a 3D equipment other than this 3D mast. So it is at its infancy in Nigeria and that uh, there is need to do it more and more. Because our factories in Nigeria will soon lack ability to order some spare parts. The, our estimation is that for COVID-19 uh, economic uh, survival will make some factories producing some smaller spare parts elsewhere in the world, even locally closing. So you should have some means of even within your factory able to do certain things that are essential. However, if it is mass production of components, it's not 3D that is most suitable. As I said, that we produce, if you want thousands and uh, hundreds and it's better we transfer the 3D design to uh, produce mold in CNC machine. The mold can be used to use plastic by injection molding or glue molding to produce this device. Thank you very much.